Check one, check two. An external direct current power supply is connected to two platinum electrodes immersed in a beaker containing 1.0 molar copper two sulfate at 25 degrees Celsius as shown in the diagram above. Pause, study the diagram. As the cell operates, copper metal is deposited onto one electrode and oxygen gas is produced at the other electrode. The two reduction half reactions for the overall reaction that occurs in the cell are shown in the table below. Boom! Part A. On the diagram, indicate the direction of electron flow in the wire. As we think about answering this question, remember, fat cat, even though this is an electrolytic cell, and I know that because we have a power supply, energy is required, electrons are still gonna flow from the anode to the cathode. As I look at my image and try to decide which of these is the anode and which of these is the cathode, recognize that we're provided with the half reaction that occurs at this platinum electrode here. It is the reduction of copper ion to solid copper. So also remember, red cat, reduction occurs at the cathode. So if this is my cathode and this is my anode and electrons flow from the anode to the cathode, my flow of electrons will happen in this direction in this electrolytic cell. Boom, one point. Part B. Write a balanced net ionic equation for the electrolysis reaction that occurs in the cell. All right, there are a couple of ways that you can determine this. One, we've already decided that the copper is being reduced. So I'm gonna leave that half reaction as is. Which means that if we already have something gaining electrons, then something else must be losing electrons, and therefore I need to reverse this other half reaction. Another way you can understand which one you need to flip is recognizing that we're producing oxygen gas. And so we would need to reverse this half reaction to have oxygen gas as a product. Additionally, it's an electrolytic cell. And so our overall cell potential, we would expect to be negative. The only way we can do that is by reversing this half reaction and therefore coming up with an oxidation potential of negative 1.23. So that overall, as you'll find out, our cell potential would be negative. Now, I'm a terrible teacher and you should really make sure that you always include your states. And before we sum these together, recognize that we need to be losing the same number of electrons that we're gaining. So I'm gonna multiply my reduction half reaction by a factor of two. Now notice I'm gaining the same number of electrons that I'm losing. I sum the two equations, boom. Notice that I have canceled out my electrons and don't include them in the overall net ionic equation. Part C, predict the algebraic sign of delta G for the reaction. Justify your prediction. All right, so let's first come up with an algebraic sign for delta G. Delta G would be positive. Here comes the justification because electrolytic cells are not thermodynamically favorable. An input of energy is required for this reaction to proceed as written. How do I know it's an electrolytic cell? Boom, power supply required. Part D, calculate the value of delta G for the reaction. Well, we just decided in part C that it has to be positive. But how can I come up with the actual value? If I look at my handy dandy formula chart, are several different ways that I can calculate delta G. As I think about what I'm provided in this problem, the most likely way I could get there is by determining the cell potential for this reaction. So first, let's determine the cell potential for this electrolytic cell. Still equal to reduction potential plus oxidation potential. As I look back at my chart, recognize that we have decided that the copper ion is being reduced and that water is being oxidized. So although I will use the value directly for the reduction of copper two ion, I need to flip the sign of my reduction potential here because we have flipped the equation to show this as an oxidation half reaction. Positive 0.34 plus negative 1.23. So both volts, be a better teacher, Mr. Boylan, don't forget your units. Free response, let me use my calculator just to play it safe. Negative 1.23. So my cell potential is negative 0.89 volts, also known as negative 0.89 joules per coulomb. Again, before you move forward, ask yourself, does it make sense that I have a negative cell potential for an electrolytic cell? Answer, yes. All right, now that we have a cell potential, let's just plug it into this equation. Have you had enough? Trickiest part about this, and I think where students make the most error, is determining number of moles of electrons transferred. So let's scroll back up, take a look at our part B. Recall that in order to come up with our overall balanced equation for this reaction, we had to multiply that reduction half reaction by two. So we're really transferring a total of 
four electrons in this balanced equation. So negative four moles of electrons times 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons times negative 0.89 joules per coulomb. Now I think it makes sense why I switched from volts to joules per coulomb. It's easier to see how the units will cancel out. Calculator time. Negative four times 96,500 times negative 0 0.89. As I think about my number of sig figs, we're not gonna worry about the counted number of moles of electrons. Our constant, we're not gonna include when it comes to significant figures. We'll look at our voltage for our cell potential to determine number of sig figs. We're gonna have just two. So 340,000, the only unit that hasn't canceled out, joules. Now, you often see this as 340,000 joules per mole. I like to think of it as 340,000 joules per mole of reaction. Also to keep things neat, some of us like to convert to kilojoules, maybe a more practical unit to work with here, kilojoules per mole, either way is fine, but it's important that you're careful with your units, either way you end up. Boom, delta G, boom. An electric current of 1.50 amps passes through the cell for 40.0 minutes, part E. Calculate the mass in grams of the copper that is deposited on the electrode. Once again, we're gonna go to our handy dandy formula chart to save us. This time, we're looking at the equation here where our current is equal to charge over the time in seconds. All right, we're told our current is 1.50 amps, coulombs per second the amount of charge per second that passes through our cell is equal to Q over T. Be cautious. A lot of students like to throw in 40.0 minutes, but recognize, and part of the reason why I went from amps to coulombs per second is that your time needs to be in seconds. Always a good idea to show your work even for simple calculations. Use your calculator while you got it, 2,400 seconds. Keep in mind, I should really have three sig figs here. So 2,400 seconds. I'm gonna remind myself of that sig fig. I multiply my current times my time, which gets me to 3,600 coulombs as the value of my charge. Again, let's keep in mind sig figs as we go. Next, I'm gonna use Faraday's constant to convert from charge to moles of electrons. And one mole of electrons carries a charge of 96,500 coulombs. So as I think about this, if 3,600 coulombs of charge has passed through the cell in 40 minutes, I haven't even passed an entire mole of electrons. But I'm looking for mass in grams of copper and recognize that for every mole of copper to plate out, we're gonna need two moles of electrons. And again, that just comes from our half reaction that we're provided with initially in the problem. You could go to your balanced chemical equation for every four moles of electrons, you'll get two moles of copper, you'll end up with the same result. And then finally to get to grams, one mole of copper, 63.55 grams. All right, let's jump to our calculator. Again, this is why it's so important to keep track of your sig figs. We end up with 1.19 grams of copper that have plated out. Boom. Take this one step at a time and think about it as you go. 3,600 coulombs of charge is less than a mole of electrons that have passed through our cell in that 40 minutes. We got 0.037 moles. Makes sense. It's a lot less than 96,500. Then we divide it by th that by two because for every mole of copper that's gonna plate out, we need two moles of electrons. So we end up with half the number of moles of copper. And then finally, recognize because we're working with a number of moles of copper that's much less than its molar mass, we should get a mass of grams of copper that's much less than the molar mass, and we do! Science! Math! All right, one more part here. It says calculate the drive volume in liters measured at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.16 atmospheres of the oxygen gas that is produced. At this point, you should be jumping for joy because you've worked through this really long problem and they're just asking you to do stoichiometry. Yes. Again, from the earlier question, we realized that we've produced 1.19 grams of copper. Let's convert our grams of copper back to moles, and then we need to compare our moles of copper to moles of oxygen gas generated. This relationship is given to us in our balanced chemical equation 
that we've written originally in part B. That relationship is a two to one relationship. Again, if you aren't able to come up with the balanced chemical equation, at least reference the equation that you've written. So don't get caught up on the fact that you've made a mistake early in the problem. Just show me your mad chem skills. One to two. Calculator this up. That gives me 0 0.00933 moles of oxygen gas. 25 degrees Celsius and 1.16 atmospheres is not standard temperature and pressure. So I'm using, you guessed it, PIVNER. PV equals NRT. Pressure, 1.16 HEM. Volume, IDK. That's what we're looking for. We know that we have 0 0.00933 moles of O2. Our gas constant, be careful. Which one do I use? There's so many of them. Oh my God, my life is over. I'm just gonna quit. No, your units will save you. Pressure in atmospheres. The gas constant that's using atmospheres, 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Boom, times my temperature in Kelvin means 298. Who needs a calculator? Not me. Just kidding, now I do. Times. 0.08206 My volume is 0 0.197 liters. Always double check, it wants it in liters. Sometimes they'll trip you up and be like, ooh, put it in milliliters, just so you can fail. Volume, boom, done.